in his name and worship Christ our Lord. Come on y'all worship him. sometimes we get caught up in, in, in self. So just forget about yourself. Concentrate on him and worship him. Come on y'all, y'all can sing it with us. Just forget about yourself. Concentrate on him and worship him. And worship him. So, forget so forget about yourself. Concentrate on him. Concentrate on him. And worship Christ our Lord. Worship him. This, this is the part we can all play. Let us lift up holy hands. Let us lift up holy hands. Magnify his name. Magnify his name. And worship him. Worship him. Everybody in the house, lift up holy hands. Let us lift up holy hands. And just magnify. Worship him. Come on and lift up holy hands. Lift up holy hands. Magnify his name. And worship Christ our Lord. Come on and worship him. Him, yeah. Worship him. Worship him. Christ, our Lord. Come on and worship him. 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 Worship
worship Him, Christ, Christ, our Lord. Hallelujah. somebody this morning as my greeting. Welcome to Ascension Fellowship Church. Well, we are here in person and virtual. And we congregate. We gather together. We unify ourselves together because we are the people trying to ascend to be the people God called us to be. And I'm just a firm believer in that because if you are not with the right community, you liable to do anything. Yeah. And what I've learned this week, and I want to say this to my virtual listeners as well to those in person. One of the things I have taken away from this weekend is this. Sinners <laughs> are not just gang members. We got some professional gang members, is that right? Yes, and professionals need to be in the house of the Lord, just like young men. Talk to me, somebody, is that right? Yes. And so if you are a professional at home, worship him, Christ the Lord, but make it a habit of going to see him in person, amen. Every now we, we get, we can got spoiled with virtual, amen. The, 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 the scripture said, they're going to come a day where I see him as he is. Not virtual, Lord have mercy. I'm going to see him as he is. And so we come looking forward to that day. Amen? Amen. And to get there, we got something they call an order of worship. Can we do that together? Yes. All right. Choo-choo, let's get on the caboose. If you will stand and join us in our responsive reading. On in Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent, who may live on your holy mountain? Congregation? The one who has walked is blameless, who knows what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their hearts, whose tongue utters no slander, who does not wrong to a neighbor and cast no slur on others. Who despises the vile person, but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts, and does not change their mind. Who lends to the poor without interest. Lord have mercy. Who does not accept a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things will never be shaken. Let us unite our hearts together in prayer. Holy and triune God, one who is and will always be the beginning, the first, and the last, Creator and sustainer of life, we come before your presence, humbled, because we could not make it through this week without you. And so we give you thanks, even though we complain about the snow. We come give you thanks. We know that as holy as you are, that if you weren't God, you would lose your mind. Because you could never please us. We ask for a son and you give us a son and we, then we complain it's too hot. We complain when the, the, the land is dry and you send the rain and you say that's too much. 
more you asked us for. Let's just spend a little time with you. We confess that we even complain about that. Have mercy, O oh God, and tabernacle with us this morning. Break some bread with us. Put a star up in the heaven so that we can follow it and find our way. Bless those who are worshiping with us in person and those who are worshiping with us virtually. Touch us as only as you can. Hear our prayer, merciful God, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading comes from the Old Testament from the book of Micah, the sixth chapter, verses one through eight. If you're at home, you can use your phone, amen. But you do need to look and read it for yourself. Micah penned these words. Hear now what the Lord says. Arise, plead your case before the mountain, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, O oh, you mountains, the Lord's complaint. And you strong foundations of the earth, for the Lord has a complaint against his people. And he will contend with Israel. Oh, my people. What have I done to you? And how have I wearied you? Testify against me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt, redeemed you from the house of bondage. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Oh, my people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, counseled, and what Balaam, the son of Dor, asked him from Archaea Globe to Gilgad, that you may know the righteousness of the Lord. What shall I come before the Lord and bow myself to? Before the high God, shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? This is the word of God. It goes on and says, will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. He has shown you, old man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God, God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Voices. Nothing but clouds and it's dark in my heart and it feels 
is also loving our children as ourselves. Amen. Is that right? Amen. I want you to be honest now. You, any, you know any children that get on your last nerve? Oh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> See, because you got you got to confess now because it said love thy neighbor, right? Yeah. So if you got some children, bring them here. Sister Allen, I want you to stand because Brother Jimmy, stand. Angela, uh, 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 Chandra, Monique, y'all stand. Because they're going to be working with these children. Amen. <laughs> You know, I, got, I, I want them to stand for me. I got to get pet peeve. We complain about stuff, but we don't want to do nothing. Lord, man, amen. amen. It's hard to get folk to do something. As long as they take the battle for a little while, we can go somewhere. And so we applaud you for taking this up. And whatever we can do, y'all just let us know. But just so you know, we got sanctuary here, all right? So there's, there's a way we got to deal with stuff. Amen, church? Amen. 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 You could be seated. Also, Christian education has a hygiene drive. That's in your bulletin. Amen. You don't know what it is to be without simple things like a comb, hand soap, Toothbrush. And I want to say to those who are listening virtually, I'm going to say this because many of us have children who live in our house, take so much for granted. Water coming out of a sink, being able to take a bath. I work with a lot of young kids, and one of the problems is we can't get them to take a bath. Mm. We got folk who are in need of these basic elements, lotion, lip balm, Q-tips, the list goes on. I want you to read this and ask this question. What can I do now, Lord? What can I do now? Isn't that enough said? And if you can get these items as soon as possible, bless your heart. Now I got to put out an announcement here to my people who say, why should I vote? Man, it ain't gonna make no difference. In your bulletin, there's an insert. Reason why we should care about the Wisconsin State Supreme Court. If you didn't know the only way these folk get there is on our vote. And if we are too lazy to vote, V-O-T-E, if we're too lazy to go cast a ballot, don't complain when you don't go to court and say you didn't get justice. Now, I want to be clear. This range of Marriott things from the simple thing of a parking ticket, judges matter, from getting bail reduced for your troubled team who's got in trouble, judges matter. When you get in a dispute at home with your daughter or son or significant other, praise the Lord, judges matter. So don't come up in ascension saying you've not been educated. Here you have four candidates. Read them. Know what they're about. But more importantly, go and cast a ballot. We have seen this year how certain people said, we're going to take your vote and brag about it. And for you to sit up here in this church and not vote, you slap God in his face. Folk and told you to your face, we have strategically planned to take your vote, and we're glad that 3,000 less folk in Milwaukee, uh, people of color, did not vote. So blood is on your hands because 
the situation we've seen how those five brother cops beat up a brother can happen here. Let's vote. Basic other communications of prayer and Bible study still on Wednesday night. Sunday school still on Sunday morning. You can do that virtual as well. But these are the things we want to lift up. And we're going to lift them up in Jesus' name. Amen. I can turn your attention back to our bulletin. I want to recognize any visitors we have. Do we have any visitors here? We just love to recognize. None? Well, we thank God for those who are visiting us virtually. And if you were here, we could give you a visitor's bag. Amen. That's why it's good to come in person. You get something. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now the good time... We're going to have the ushers come forth for this morning's offering. Amen. And because we want to just be together, we're going to have one usher come and stand up here in front, and we're going to ask you to walk around, get some little exercise. Is that all right? That ain't going to hurt nobody, right? Because when you go out here, you're going to sit in your car. You're going to get some sitting there. So, Sister Sheila, just come up and hold the two trays. And we're going to ask you to come around and go back to your seat. Amen? Let us pray. God of glory, we thank you for the ability to share our love with you. At this time, we share it through giving. First of all, Lord, giving of ourselves, claiming you to be our Lord and Savior, thanking you for suffering, bleeding, and dying, and rising again on the third day. We thank you. We thank you so much that we just want to give back to your portion of how you blessed us. And so, Lord, whatever that is given from the heart, multiply it so that we can do the work you would have for us to do on this corner. Hear us. Now we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Will you please come as the Spirit leads you?
If it is something that you want to keep silent, the altar is open where you can come and make your request known before God. Would you come? Please. You just 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 share it. I'll repeat it. Morning, giving honor to God. Life, honor and the privilege to speak with you. The last two. Very, very, very emotional. Mm. Die from the dead. Mm. There are many funerals, and it's painful. Uh, it's a horrible, 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 horrible decision. out on drugs. Mm -hmm. I am a miracle. I am 22 years clean from drugs. Oh. And my heart is so heavy because people are very judgmental when someone makes a mistake. Mm -hmm. When you don't judge people when they're in trouble or when they're strung out on alcohol or drugs, you pray for them. You pray for their help. You pray. Our, our city is in trouble. With drugs, they're so. I've had three people in the last week die from the uh, fentanyl. They're putting fentanyl on weed, cocaine, uh, heroin. They're putting it on everybody, and these people are close to me. Let's pray for our city. Let's pray for our people because uh, that was one of my customers' daughters who killed herself on 89th and Hampton. They were looking for her on Facebook. Mother was angry that way. We're losing our youth every day. And it's emotional because it's, it's bad enough to hear it on the news, but it's more painful when you know the person. Let's get to prayer now. Thank mm -hmm. you. Because every now and then we need to let folk know we're standing by them. And oftentimes we give a bad impression when we stand up there and don't come down with folk. God has revealed to us this morning this sister pain. She has come out in the snow. Many folk won't do that. And every now and then when the pain gets so gripping, nothing stops you from coming to God but your pride. Yeah. Not your pain, your pride. And I know that someone worshiping with us in person or virtually have a similar story. Yeah. I know that because of news. Fentanyl's everywhere. I've been told that they're even putting it in a Vicks cough syrup. And so you think you're taking something and unbeknownst to you, you wonder why you're sick. This is why we can't forsake the assembly of one another before God. When we lift our hands in the sanctuary, we're not just praising, we are praying. So we're praying for the sister her loved ones, and all of the silent voices where pain is so deep that they can't utter anything. Maybe you have a prayer request. Would you love to share at this time? Good morning, church. Um, I would like to ask for prayer for my family because, you know, like I said, this drug problem Everywhere is, is bad, and they're not really shining a light on it, 
and I don't know why. Um, like two weeks ago, I've just been hearing rumors of about 18 people or, yeah, off of Jackson, uh, OD, you know, off of fentanyl. And just to find out a couple of days ago that my cousin in the hospital, <laughs> you know, because we can't, when, when people have addiction, they have to feel. We can't just, go, just talk about them. It's hard for them. We don't know what they're going through. <laughs> and, um, you know, she, she was taking pills. And she got an appeal from somebody, you know. And the appeal was, was fit all. And she helped me. And like two days later, you know, they was running tests, the brain test, and they said that she couldn't go home. You know, so we lost her on on Tuesday. So just pray for my family with that. Yeah. I don't know what your pain is. Brother Smith? Is that... Um, yes. Do everything. I work in this field. Even the workers. Some... Uh, So struck about the loss that's going on. But they are in the work. And it's real. It's real. It's worse than it has been. Right. Worse than it has been because you don't know. Is in everything. Reality is a They need to hear something different. They need to see something different than they always do. Good morning. I'm asking for prayers for my mother. Really, my mother. We're getting ready. And this is. Of our mother. Jesus. 
this life. Thank you. This is in person. I just want to give a word to those who are worshiping us virtually. You can type in your prayer requests and we will respond. But on a day like this, I want you to understand this snow out here is the least of our problems. It's the least of our problems. So together, let us unite our hearts in prayer because we need it. Loving God, we are moved by your mercy and your grace. We're moved because through death, you give us knowledge. Through death, you strengthen our compassion. Through death, you give us a holy Zion will to evangelize, to go tell somebody. Tell somebody to stay away from drugs, to stay away from things that can be latent with fentanyl, to tell somebody to come and go with me to my father's house and get a high that will never leave you. To get a high that will take you high. To get a high of God's love. Minister to us, oh God, where we are and who we are. And then if by some chance someone who is listening said, I want to change my life. I, I, I'm addicted. I, I need to fight it because this could be me. Lord, minister to them right now. Let them know that this place, Ascension Fellowship Church, is one where we will put our arms around them and walk with them through the valley of relief, through the valley of reclaiming their life. And now, Lord, hear our prayer for those who loved ones are in a stage of transitioning. Comfort them by your mercy and your grace Give them the strength to endure. Walk with them night and day. Help them, oh God. And may those who have turned you off be turned on by the inevitable sight of the passing of a loved one. Hear our prayer for those who are homeless. Those who are hungry. Those who are naked those who are lonely, those who are despised, those who are discouraged. Hear our prayer for the family who have lost their loved one due to the police losing their mind. Remind us as parents the responsibility of training our child the way that they should go so that when they endeavor come in these situations you will put a fence around them to lead them or guide them or yet still Lord have the capacity to cry out for their mama we cry out now oh God in our silence for all of those prayer requests that are said silently in person and in virtual Hear our prayer for our mothers, our elder men. Remedy those who have back aches, those who have sciatic problems in their body. All the prayer time that we could take would not be enough. And so we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you. 
Hear us as we pray, as you taught us, praying our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Sister, God be with you. Angela, God be with you. Brother Smith, God be with you. God be with all of those who are worshiping with us virtually, that God will send you a blessing to get through this child in your life. We invite you now to turn to the gospel reading found in Matthew's gospel, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 12. Gospel reading, if you're able. The gospel says the following to us. And seeing the multitude, he went up on a mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the righteous sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kind of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say thanks be to God. You may be seated. Choir, would you please minister to us? After that, Reverend Richard Stroh will come with a word from God.
give myself to you. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. I give myself to you. thought about that because sometimes we think it's all about us if you listen to one word my life is not my own here we are in 2023 not because of anything that we've done but because of God's great and mercy he allowed us to see this year we have to remember to keep Jesus as the center of our joy, the center of our life. And, and when we do that, we have purpose and meaning in our lives. I give myself away. That's why we're here. All that you have, God means for us to share that, not keep it to yourself. We want to be used by God. That's our purpose. He, he brought us into creation. He created us so that we would worship and praise him. And sometimes we get lost. We forget whose we are and where he's brought us from. It's just, 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 I want you to think about that because that ties into the message today. God is to be the center of our joy. God is not to be an option that we fit in where he can get in. See, sometimes we've lost our way and we have all these things going on in our life. And we want to treat God as an add-on. You know what I mean by add-on? You know, I got to do this, I got to do this. Oh, well, I don't know if I have time for church today. I got all other things coming in front of God. And God tells us real clearly in his word, I don't go for that. There's one thing I like about the Bible. When you read it, it's real clear. If you remember the first commandment, what does it say? It says, I am a jealous God. Thou shall have no other God before me. But it seems like some people have gotten selective amnesia. They've forgotten, they've forgotten that. And so we find in the book of Micah, he's telling people who say they love the Lord. He's telling people who have their art of worship that you're missing the point. And sometimes we've got people right now in 2023 that are still missing the point. You know, externally they look good, but internally they're not about the Lord and the Lord's business. As you, as you study the Bible, everything that God wants us to do is real clear. In fact, if we look at Micah, the sixth verse, sixth chapter, eighth verse, he has shown you what is good. In other words, we already know what to do. I read someplace that was 
31,702 verses in the Bible. Let me tell you something, church. You don't have to know all of those. We already know what we, want, what we should be doing. And you only need a handful of verses. Do unto others as you have them do unto you. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. If you just remember those three verses. That's all you need to know to do what God has called you to do. You know, some of us have made the statement or heard the statement. How many times do you have to keep telling you the same thing over and over? Everybody heard, somebody heard that? I know the men have. <laughs> or maybe you've heard, why are you waiting for me to tell you to do it? If you see something that needs to be done, what's the, what do y'all say? Say again. Can you transfer that to your spiritual walk? How many times and how many ways does the Lord have to keep telling you to do right? How many ways does the Lord have to keep telling you to love mercy? You know, when you, lead, when you look at verse 8, he's shown you, O oh mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? Is to act justly and to love mercy and walk humbly with your God. You know, something in the power of words, because when you look at the word require and you dial it down to the Latin and the Greek and the Aramaic, you get the full meaning of the word. It isn't just an ask. It's a demand. So he's saying God isn't asking you to do these things. He's demanding it. And sometimes say, who is God to demand all these things from us? I want you to think about who brought you here? Who looked past your missteps and good intentions? Who did that? Who created us? We were his creation. How dare us say that the God can't demand of us to do what he told us to do? We need to remember where we came from. We remember, you know, but only by the grace of God that we're still here. We're a car accident away, a fire away, a random bullet away from not being here. So God has the right, he has the authority to say, this is what I want from you. You know, you don't, you don't kick back when the IRS says this is what I want from you. But God has, God has that authority. So God, you find Michael telling people who say they believe in God that you're missing the point. They had worship service. But it wasn't worship service. They went through the motions. He called them out and said, wait a minute. You know, if you, if, if you did all these things, you should be touched enough that you'll go out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start compiling things for the needy. That's the person of worship is to come out different. Person, purpose of worship is to come out transforming. That I'm going to change. Something's going to me going to change today. That's why you come here. The songs that the choir sings are thought-provoking songs. We should think about it. What do I have to be grateful for? Why am I sold out? It should make me think because if, I, if the shoe doesn't fit, then maybe I need to look at my feet. So you find, you, find, you find the writer saying, first of all, before we get into acting justly, walking with God, we need to recognize God for who he is. See, I find too often that nowadays in the 21st century, some people want to downgrade God and make God their buddy. God is not our buddy. God is God. And there's always going to be a separation between us and God. We are the creation. He's the creator. He's the potter. We the clay. So don't get it twisted. God is not your friend. God is God. And we need to treat him as God. I think he used to say, 
somebody's folks used to say, you better recognize. Better recognize. You know, the, the people that say there are all kinds of religious books and they're all expressions of the same thing. If you read the Quran, you know, uh, or you read the Book of Mormon, they're all pointing to God. That's a lie. I'm just going to call it with plain English. It's a lie. None of those books talk about a savior. None of those books talk about a resurrection. None of those books talk about end time. Only God's holy word says that. So don't get caught up in the stupid stuff. See, many people think about having God in their life. That sounds like a good thing to include on my resume. I go to church. I go to church. But it's not the purpose of going to church. Church has come, is a workshop. It's a hospital. It's not, it's, not, it's not just a social activity. And so some people go out of habit. Some people go out of guilt. Some people go because it seems like a good idea at the time. And if having one God is okay, maybe I need to diversify and have as many gods as I can. But what did God's word say? Thou shalt not have another God besides me. And too often we get caught up in self. Self becomes a God. Worry becomes a God. Greed becomes a God. Lust becomes a God. And God says, put all of that aside. If you're going to worship me, it's either or. Either you worship me, obey me, and do as I tell you, or not at all. Old folks said like 99 and a half won't do. God wants us 100% in. In another context, we're supposed to be all in, holding nothing back from God. When I talk about I give myself away, it means I open myself up to the Lord, warts and all. I stand vulnerable. I give myself away. I have to lower my head because I'm a sinner. You know, and, uh, and he says, you want to use me? I got to, wait, wait, wait a minute, Lord, you, don't, you know how raggedy my stuff is. But well, God, if God calls you to do something, he already knows. We just need to confess it. Isn't that what the prophet said? I'm a man of unclean lips. And Jesus removed that uncleanliness because he wants to use us. Talked about fitting God in. We're not supposed to fit God in. God is supposed to be the priority. There's a difference between the priority and a priority. Would you agree? That means there's God. Everything else is down here. That includes people, places, and things. God is supposed to be the center of our joy. God is supposed to be who we orbit around. The scripture says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised them from the dead, you will be what? You will be saved. And so we have to look at ourselves when we come together and worship as an assembly of believers. We, you know, we have the worship down to a science. You know, we got this nice order of worship. It has its place. But we need to remember why. Why do we come here every Sunday? What are we expecting to get out of this? Because you should come with an attitude of expectation. You could expect something's going to be different when I walk off this door. It might, it might be a song. I might just have to call up a scripture or two, but it's going to be something. And when I, something gets a hold of me, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something with, what been, with, with what's been given to me. So we come to church, and, and we've got to be transformed. We can't be the same people we were in 2023. I'm sorry, 2022, because this is a new beginning. So all the things that we didn't do last year, we've been given an opportunity this year, this year, to do something different. And so if we're worrying about whether we fit in with everybody else, whether we are doing as well as everybody else, then we're conforming to this world. We're called to be Transform. Go from the old self to the new self. 
question, conscious question. How how much different are we in 2023 than we were in 2022? Say again. A stronger faith. That's one voice, but it should be some other voices saying, I'm different in 2023 than I was in 2022. First of all, I'm thankful that I'm in 2023. Second of all, I recognize it was God's grace, not because of my works. If you want to be different in 2023, guess who it's up to? You and I. If it is to be, it's going to have to be us. If you're waiting for somebody else to make you different, then you'll never change. But if you invite the Lord to your heart and say, hear me, Lord, I want to be available to you. I want to be used by watch and see what the Lord, the Lord would do with you. So we got to deal with our emotions because when we're talking about doing right by other people, we got to deal with our heart. Because too often, even as Christians, we worry about if they deserve it. We do pass judgment. Yeah, Christians pass judgment. I helped you. I don't need to help you. That's the pastor's job. Or I don't need any help. I can't come sing for the Lord. They do well enough without me. We can see what everybody can do but ourselves. We can see, we talked about desire mercy. We can see mercy for ourselves, can't we? Oh, Lord, have mercy for me. Oh, Lord, you know they ain't right. <laughs> they ain't right, Lord. You need, to, you, need, you need to tighten them up. You hold them accountable. But we've got to learn when he talks about walking with me. He's not talking about a stroll around the block for your cardio. He's talking about learning from me, learning from God in the flesh, Jesus. Jesus said, when he said, come follow me, he wasn't talking about parade. He was talking about in-service learning. Learn how to live your life the right way. Because when you're walking, then you're learning. When you're learning, now I know how to act justly. I know how to do the right thing. I know how to be merciful and forgiven. The other thing that we have to recognize and we don't emphasize is enough is sovereignty. You've heard that word before? God's sovereignty. What does that mean when you say the Lord is the head of our life? It means he's in control. It's not what I want. It's what you want, Lord. So we accept the salvation piece, but we don't want to accept him as Lord. We still want to do our own thing, but if we're truly, truly his, if we're truly, truly his, we're going to say, you're in control. We're going to say, Jesus, take the wheel. You tell me where you need me to go. You tell me how fast you want me to run. You tell me how, how loud you want me to praise you. You're in control. So we got to humble ourselves if we're going to walk with the Lord. And we need to walk with the Lord because what he asks us to do, the right thing, it's hard to do the right thing. I don't always feel like doing the right thing. But I'm blessed with a wife who reminds me to do the right thing. You see, sometimes I can get a little trifling myself. <laughs> no, I can be, she says I carry grudges. I don't think that's true. But uh, <laughs> I, I share that because when we're doing the right thing, we can only practice doing the right thing if we've been walking with the Lord, if we've been learning from the Lord. We have the example in his word. Jesus always did the right thing when a lot of us would have bailed out. A lot of us would have said, I'm going to get you for this. You're not going to whoop on me. I'm not going to call my boys up to take care of you. But when you're walking with the Lord, your viewpoint changes. You see things from a different level. You know, we talked about going through things. We talked about this in Sunday school. Sometimes when you're going through, you lose your focus. Sometimes when you're going through, you lose your mind. But when you're walking with the Lord, you, you start to see things. Yes, I'm going through a little bit. But someone told me, trouble don't last always. Someone told me, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. 
Somebody told me that. Somebody showed me that. Because we need to encourage one another. When we come here, and I appreciate the sister's testimony, because we need to surround her with love. But we also need to ask, how can I help you? But she's still got to go on, and she needs to know, you're not by yourself. So we need, we need to gather around her. You got a young sister dealing with the death of someone. It's one thing when it's a statistic. It's another thing when it's personal. We got, we got to comfort her. Comfort her. Because some things we don't understand. We're so, we thank God that God has strengthened us so we can say no to certain situations. But not everybody is as strong as us. And so he means for the stronger vessels to help the weaker vessels. So we start off 2023 better than we were in 2022. We start off 2023 equipped do what the Lord has called us to do. And after we've done the right thing, after we treated people the way that we wanted to be treated, and after we committed ourselves to living a daily relationship with God, I'm going to ask, I'm going to end on this point, ask, do you like where you are right now? Do you like your situation right now. If you're not happy where you are right now, call out to the Lord. Ask that the Spirit fall fresh upon you. Because you can't get where you want to go by standing still. You can't get where you want to go by looking back. we got to be moving forward in 2023. So we need to move closer to the Lord. Because this is trying time. If we think 2022 was bad, what? Just think about January. Mass shootings. Murder of an innocent man. You know, I, I, I think most of us saw that video from Memphis, Tennessee. That young man weighed 140 pounds. And five policemen my side. My size, I weigh 250, beat him to death. You know, that's not going to be the only thing that happens in 2023. This is just the story. We need you, Lord. We need to keep him the center of our lives. We need him to order our steps. Lest we become discouraged. Lest we forget where we've come from. We need to focus on the spiritual. We need change. We need to be transformed. There might be someone today, as I, as I wrap this up, there might be someone today that wants to go in a different direction. There might be someone today that says, my life doesn't make any sense. There might be someone today say, Lord, hear my prayer. Let us, as a body of believers, let us guide you. Let us help you take that next step with the Lord's help. So this morning, we open the doors of this church for membership, or if you want to commit to taking it up to the next level, because you're brothers and sisters in Christ, but the next level is to become disciples, become apostles. The church is open. Please stand. That's a testimony in itself. He will pick you up and turn your life around. And all of us have been turned around. You want to know him. Get to know him. Get to know him. When? Knowing Jesus. Then knowing Jesus. Oh, he'll pick you up. He will pick you Look up. Look where he's brought us from. Turn your life around. You want to know, know him, him as your savior. Get to know him.
Let's reflect on this. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. I don't know if we're going to do a closing hymn or not, but while you're standing. Say, why not? Go ahead, sister. Mm. Sending forth. The heart of God is the Father. The face of God is the Son. The voice of God is the Holy Spirit. And the hand of God is me and you. It's time to do something that reminds others of the Lord. Choose to be transferred, transformed by his word and spirit. Ascend to be the people that God has called each and every one of us to be. Let us go forth and serve in his name. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. If you're looking for your end of year giving statement, please see me in my office. Oh, we would have messed up without you being here. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Ascension family, and good morning to the friends of Ascension. I want to take this time to thank you. Thank you for your past support. Thank you for your prayers, your witness, and your testimony, and thank you for your financial support. It's because of all those things we're able to minister from this place that God has blessed us with. I want to thank you for enabling us to transition from an in-person worship to a digital worship. You've probably noticed over the past month how the quality of that service has improved. That is because of your support. As we go into the year 2021, we're going to ask you to continue to support this ministry from this place in all the ways that you can. It's very important. Financially, you continue to send your tithes and offerings that you always have through the mail, or you may take advantage of the Cash App application. The information for that is scrolling at the bottom of the Again, if you need any additional information, you certainly are welcome to call the church. You can call me at 262-391-4022. I am Reverend Richard A. Stroh, Assistant Pastor.